Just recently, the Boeing 737 MAX was declared the safe airplane to fly by European and American aviation authorities. Hmm, so it's time for us to talk about it. Hello my friends and welcome. My name is Dennis and I am Boeing 737 captain. It is the first video in our series about the Boeing 737 MAX and today we are going to discuss with you why do we really need the Boeing 737 MAX and why this airplane was designed. Bum, bum. As you probably know guys, the aviation industry is quite unique in its regulations. Sometimes those regulations are quite strict, but if we speak about our modern commercialized world, in general the aviation industry is the same with other industries where the airlines and where the airplane manufacturers compete with each other for the customer, for the client. Let's say that we have the airline A and airline B. The airline A operates Airbuses, the airline B operates Boeing. But somehow the ticket cost for airline A is 10% cheaper compared to airline B. So what airline would you choose to fly? The service is the same, everything is the same, they both fly new airplanes. I think you would choose the airline A because you pay less money and it's our human nature to save the resources. So 10% is quite a lot. In the end, you may fly more flights on airline A by saving that money. The air traveling is not luxurious anymore like it was in 1950s, 60s or 70s. Well, there is some part of it like business class, first class in some of the airlines and also you may rent or buy the business jet but we're not going to talk about it because the majority of passengers would like to pay less for the travels and that's actually good because it's boosting the aviation industry and it's boosting the global aviation economy. But why the ticket price for airline A is cheaper compared to airline B? Hmm. Then you buy your ticket for your flight, you pay for salary, for my salary, for flight tenants, for airline management salary, you pay for airplane maintenance costs, you pay for airport fees, you pay for the ground stuff, you pay basically for everything. And the most thing that you pay for is the jet fuel. That is why if the airline would have modern airplanes with less maintenance costs, and also more efficient airplanes, it may lower the ticket price for the customers. And that is why we see huge orders for airplanes like Airbus 320 Neo, for Boeing 737 MAX, for Boeing 787, for Boeing 777X, for Airbus 350. And that is why we see older airplanes like Boeing 737 Classic, Boeing 747 and Boeing 767, they just got retired. In 2010, the Airbus announced the major modification for their A320. They wanted to replace the old CFM engines with new high bypass ratio CFM leap engines and that will make the new Airbus NEO, new engine operation, 15% more efficient. After that announcement, the Airbus had record orders for their new airplane from all around the world and not only from their classical clients who had already Airbuses in their fleet, they also had the orders from the airlines who had only Boeings in their fleet because in that way the airlines may compete with each other. So that comes the problem for the Boeing. You see, it was quite easy to put the huge CFM leap engines under the wings of Airbus 320 because this airplane was designed in 80s and by that time the designers already knew that they will put bigger and bigger engines under the wing of that airplane. With Boeing 737 it's the other story. The Boeing Corporation hadn't had any up-to-date middle-range single-aisle airplane those days and what they had is they had the Boeing 737 NG. Basically it's the airplane that I fly today 
It's quite okay airplane, it's one of the most safe airplanes around, the safe statistics is the same with Airbus. However, it's quite old design, it's the third generation of Boeing 737s. Actually, the 737 was designed in late 60s and you can clearly see it even in Boeing 737NG. The overhead panel is almost the same with the Jurassic Boeing 737. But anyway, I think it's quite reliable airplane and I would compare it with old and reliable Volvo or something. Bum, bum. My friends, I'm not good at drawing, sorry, but let's consider that it is the Boeing 737, the first modification, the original version, some call it Jurassic, the Boeing 737-200. So it had the GTD-8 Delta-17 engines, the low bypass ratio engines, very narrow engines compared to uh, CFM Leap engines, and the same engines were installed on the Boeing 727. The main idea behind this scheme and why the engines were so low is to reduce the maintenance cost. Let me explain. On previous model, the Boeing 727, the engines were here. So every day, every time that you need maintenance for your engines you need to uplift the oil for example the maintenance personnel will go and take the stairs to one engine then go back put the stairs to other engine uplift the oil here the maintenance personnel may just walk around open the engine cover and uplift for example the oil they may do the maintenance just here they don't need to remove the engine itself so it was nice feature but what Boeing didn't think about is about new modern engines by that time these engines were modern and designers later realized that the higher bypass ratio will have the more efficient engines are so at that moment later on in some years Boeing needed to put this huge engine maybe not this huge but this huge engine under the wing of this airplane it was a hard task to do the main problem here was with the ground clearance so they had to move the engines a little bit forward and a little bit upper and they also made the engines look like this look flat so if you see the Boeing 737 Classic Boeing 737 NG and also Boeing 737 Max the inlet is not round as an Airbus, it is flat. And all the uh, gearbox, I mean the engine gearbox, move to the side. On Airbus it's on the bottom here. But for Boeing 737 it's on the side. So they had a diff little bit different engine design. Every generation they had the same issue, the engines. For NG is the same, the engines are bigger, so they had to move the airplane a little bit upper, nose landing gear, main landing gear, and the same problem was with Boeing 737 MAX. For the fourth generation, the Boeing 737 MAX, they put the engines more forward and upper. If you look at the front of the airplane, like here, you'll see the engine inlet, that the engine inlet is actually higher than the wing itself so they also increased the uh, nose gear landing strut length and that is how they increased the total gr ground clearance Boeing announced that it will be the final modification of Boeing 737 so later on they should have come out with uh, should come out with some different idea for middle range single aisle airplane there was a problem with new engine design since the engine were moved forward and upward the great pitch moment occurred at the high thrust settings and near to critical angles of attack near to high angles of attack it can be could be unsafe so the pitch up moment is here it was greater than on Boeing 737 NG and according to regulations they have the same type rating uh, with Boeing 737NG for pilots, the airplane should have been controlled as Boeing 737NG. And that is why, to compensate that, the Boeing introduced the MCAS system. Probably you all know what's about. The MCAS system will deflect the uh, stabilizer itself, it will move the stop trim wheel 
uh, 2.5 degrees per time if it senses the high angle of attack if the autopilot is off so no autopilot and if the flaps are up flaps up so that is where the M castle trigger that it should move the stabilizer itself to compensate that great moment from the engines the big problem with MCAS maneuvering characteristics argumentation system is that if it triggers the falsy alpha the falsy angle of attack data it can move the it can falsely move the stabilizer uh, pitching the airplane down so it will compensate of course this moment but if there is no any moment and if it triggers the falsy alpha you have the alpha wind detector over here and from other side as well if it triggers the falsy alpha it may falsely put the stabilizer down you may also use the electrical trim and MCAS system will let you do it but later on it will trim the nose down again uh, for the pilot action we'll talk about in next video about uh, line air crash and FE open crash uh, whether the pilots did what they could do everything they could do and where was it the 100% the Boeing's uh, failure to design this falsy uh, airplane uh, the problem with the alpha detector alpha wing was uh, that the alpha detection was only from one detector Boeing 737 has two angle of attack detectors but somehow designers put one alpha detector to this critical uh, MCAS system I don't know why now in new modification they use two angle of attack detectors so why there was MCAS problem first I put the dollar sign here it means the competition between Boeing and Airbus and between the airlines and they wanted to have the good efficient airplane for Boeing because there were many orders for Airbus 320neo so they had, had to wait several years and they need the new efficient airplane from Boeing uh, right away because their pilots had the uh, Boeing 707 type rating like I do Boeing 707 NG so they want their the pilots to fly modern efficient airplanes with the less uh, money is possible to spend for their requalification for better plane because of the FAA regulation because they want to regulate this airplane as uh, Boeing 737 NG same type rating for the pilots they introduced the MCAS system because they moved the engine forward and upper they had to put it even now after recertification uh, during the recertification we still have in CAS system you cannot get away without it so the problem with the MCAS was that it senses only it uses only one alpha sensor angle of attack sensor the software was very cheap and not reliable and there was no MCAS information in FCOM or any other documents as far as I know uh, for pilots and for airlines so we didn't know what this system is I think it's very critical system so there were mistakes taken by Boeing and I think this and this was done also to save money so one alpha software was very cheap and I know why they did like this why they didn't mention the MCAS system maybe also because of regulations I don't really know but really we didn't know what this MCAS system is until the liner crash now for redesign Boeing 737 MAX we have data from two sensors uh, to MCAS system we have new software for that system and we have lots of information about the MCAS but I'll tell you later about the new Boeing 737 MAX modification in next videos thank you very much for watching me that is why you are awesome guys and let's follow the awesome guy checklist first just like this video second subscribe to my channel third ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time bum, bum.